Wireless communication of World War I. Radio. One of the key issues was that the spark, once the spark was struck and being conducted, the radio frequency energy created by the spark transferred from the spark circuit to the antenna and back many times with much of the RF energy being absorbed in the spark rather than being radiated. In addition to, to this, the signal was very broadband in nature and also gave a rough sound to the o- operator's headphones. To improve overall efficiency of these early radio transmit- transmitters, Marconi invented a system whereby the spark was struck and extinguished in a more controlled manner using a static disc to vary the length of the spark. Today's radios are miracles of modern technology filled with low-power, high-performance integrated circuits crammed into the smallest spaces. The basic principle of the radio is usually the super hit. The same idea, which was developed by Edwin Armstrong back in 1918. The Navy adopted a wireless system. Up to then, the Navy had been using visual signaling and homing pigeons for communication. True radio communications were, of course, based on the work of Maxwell and the experiments of Hertz. The first use of radio transmit coded information was probably proposed by Tesla in the 1880s, and the first radio communication systems were described in his papers around 1891, nearly simultaneously. Marconi patented the telegraph and demonstrated to the world (laughs) the usefulness of mobile communications with ships crossing the channel, the English Channel. Interestingly, The infancy of radio communications already emphasizes the importance at some point. Point one. Certain radio frequencies overcome line of sight obstructions and weather impediments. Point two. Mobility is the main application. Point three. Patent protection is paramount. By 1914, radio communications or wireless telegraphy, as these communications were then known, were used by the world's military and navy forces. The relationship of the frequency or wavelength, power, directivity, and range were not well understood. Signals officers and commanders in the field and at headquarters rarely took into account the possibility of interception or deception. Marconi also invented the radio because people believed that radio waves would not follow the curvature of the earth. To improve the overall efficiency of these early radio communications transmitters, Marconi was a system whereby the spark was struck and extinguished in a more controlled manner using a static disc to vary the length of the spark. As each sun on the wheel came towards the stationary electrode, the gap narrowed and the spark struck. As it then moved away, the s- length of the spark increased and eventually was extinguished. This development of invention had a number of advantages. Firstly, the signal received by the operator had a more musical note and was easy to copy. Secondly, the extinction of the spark was timed to occur as the reflected power and was returned from the aerial circuit. As the oscillations from the spark were unable to return to the now extinguished spark, the oscillations reduced were slowly increasing, uh, reduced slowly, increasing the efficiency and also reducing the signal bandwidth. The result was that Marconi introduced the system onto his transatlantic transmitters in 1907, thereby increasing the reliability, although in reality, messages often needed to be transmitted several times within hours. Wartime priorities emphasize the potential of counteroffensive inherent in wireless communication. Signals could be intercepted. For example, the direction finding techniques could locate the positions of enemy transmitters. Once it was possible to locate transwireless sets in which troops' positions could be all known also, as well as zeppelins and other hostile aircrafts. It was the detection of wireless traffic that alerted British Navy to the movements of the German fleet and precipitated the Battle of Jutland in May 1916, which is why I consider this a successful piece of warfare technology.
Marconi succeeds in sending the first radio transmission across the Atlantic Ocean, disproving detractors who told him that the curvature of the Earth would limit transmission to 200 miles or less. The message from the, the Morse code signal for the letter S traveled more than 2,000 miles from Bonhu in Cornwall, England, to Newfoundland, Canada. It was used by the Royal Navy and British Army to trace the position of German submarines, surface naval vessels, and submarines. He demonstrated his system successfully in London on Salisbury Plain and across Bristol Channel, and in July 1897 formed the Wireless Telegraph and Signal Company Limited in 1900, renamed Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Company Limited. In the same year, he gave a demonstration to the Italian government at Spezia, where the wireless signals were sent over a distance of 12 miles. In 1899, he established wireless communication between France and England across the English Channel. He erected permanent wireless stations at the Needles, Isles of Wight, at Bryn Mawr, and later at Havre Hotel, Pool d'Orsay.